Hi, Demetrius. Welcome hey, to Anna. our mentor show at Startups Ignite. You've been mentoring with us for many years now. You have a really deep side in product strategy, but you combine that with corporate strategy. And you're just like, I think you bring that holistic executive leadership to the startup domain. I do bring business and technology together based on my background and what I have been doing. I've been in the startup ecosystem for over 20 years now. Some have been my own, where I was either a founder or my ID and things like that. Others have been where I joined the startup, helped them grow and had a few exits along the way. I've been mentoring and acting as a business coach for the past three, four years through the Small Business Development Center. And I've been seeing a lot of early stage concepts and companies and have also seen common themes of issues and needs along the way that a lot of early stage companies struggle with. So you have such a breadth of experience to pull from both personally and from working in ventures from ideation to exit, but then more recently you've been doing a lot more at scale with mentoring and coaching. So, you know, that's really great to be able to have that experience that you bring. And you talked a little bit about seeing a lot of the issues or common themes. And we work with early stage startups. A lot of them are at the pilot stages or onboarding first customers and early seed stage. Based on what you're seeing, what are like some themes that you want to talk through today in today's interviews? I can talk about two types of issues that seem to be fairly common across startups. One is that there is a concept, an idea of what they want to do, but there is no really good understanding of the market, more specifically who the customer is and what the customer actually wants and needs. And it seems to be a common disconnect because a lot of the entrepreneurs say, oh, I have a great idea, everybody wants it. And then they go out to try to validate it and they realize it's not something that the market needs. The other side is another common theme and cross, which is capital. And that is, especially early stage, they come, companies come in and say, where do I get capital? Where do I get grants? Things like that, which unless you're a known entity or you have some connections in the funding community becomes extremely difficult. And it's best to try and do something in stages so you can fund it yourself or partner with others who will be able to help you not only developing the concept, but also providing some funding that will allow you to move to the next stage of development. Yeah, I think you bring up two really big issues that startups are often faced with, which is identifying their first early adopter market and then getting funding, right? I want to unpack that a little bit. So a lot of the startups that I'm seeing in our upcoming programs, they are, and the thing I love working about social impact is that they know what problem they're solving. It's a real problem. And they've come up with good ideas of how to solve the problem as well in impactful, impactful ways. But quite often, building a business model around it can be challenging because sometimes and quite often the beneficiary, when you're working with underserved markets and whatnot, aren't going to be a customer. And then I've also seen a lot of these startups, they have these multiple pilots going on, but sometimes in totally different sectors. So it is a real challenge, even when they've identified the problem, identify who they're solving it for. Identifying who the customer is really challenging. I wanted you to speak a little bit to that, maybe. We'll try. One, one of the things is that, especially early stage, focus is important. I've seen some that are trying to do a lot of different things at the same time and becomes extremely difficult because there are only a limited number of resources. So you need to be focusing and be successful on one thing before you start expanding. Now, the other thing with social impact concepts where there is a beneficiary, there is a market, but then you got to penetrate the market and make sure that what you bring into the market, someone wants to pay for it, 
and also be able to expand from there because the beneficiary may have certain ideas that only go to some extent that creates a very small market opportunity then it may or may not be sustainable so the thing is how do you expand from there whether it's the same concept or slightly modified concept to expand your market footprint to be able then to start growing and potentially do other ideas that you have come up with. Yeah, it's such a challenge, right? They want, they're so focused on the impact, which is super important, but unless you can be sustainable, you can only fund it out of pocket for so far. I think to your point, like really looking at what does the actual customer market want and is that large enough for you scale, especially as the startups are going after a VC investment or going after equity financing. I think that's super important and it really is a, a challenge that all of the startups coming into this program. So I like I love where this is going. I wanted to see if we could go a little bit into scaling impact. One of the themes in, in, in our program is social impact meets emerging technology. Also, you mentioned focus is really important, right? Focus is important, but how do we look at scalability meets viability meets impact meets business model? I know this is such a loaded question. I put tons of things out there, but let's, I just love to glean any thoughts that you have and nuggets that we can apply. It, it's tricky, let's put it that way, uh, because a lot of those things, depending on how you see them, they may be mutually exclusive, okay? When you're talking about social impact, there is quite a bit of potential, but it's, it costs. No matter what you want to do, it's going to cost something to take it to the market to operate and so on. And the question is, who's going to pay for all that? Is it going to be government organizations? Is it going to be private industry? Is it going to be a consumer, some other customer? That needs to be identified because if you don't have it identified nobody is gonna consider you seriously and give you capital to get to where you would like to be scalability comes along that way as you progress to get into the market and have identified that the market is of certain size but they're also related markets where the similar, similar technology, let's say, or similar concepts can be applied. So in that respect, what you're looking to do is, even if it's a small market, are there adjacent markets that have the same problem and you, what you have developed can apply? Because that's another way to introduce scalability. So just look for patterns where you can repeat success, even if it isn't in the exact same market. Could be, exactly. could be a, yeah. an approach. Yeah, I love that. And it's great because this is what all the startups are coming in to try and figure out and learn. And I'm really glad to have you on our team to, to help us help the startups through this. Going on to the funding bit. And again, all these conversations circle back to social impact because that's, that's the theme of our programs moving forward. But another challenge, the second challenge startups are coming in with is social impact meets, I would say, VC funding or just traditional investor funding, right? So there's social impact investors and quite often they're looking for a specific social impact outcome at times. And then we have investors that may or may not really care about social impact or even in some really extreme circumstances, may think social impact means non-business. How do we guide the startups through these challenging conversations where they're really trying to show this convergence or confluence of, yes, I'm social impact, but I also have a really viable business? Yeah. It's, it's a tricky conversation, and that starts with the concept itself. When, when, you, want, when you want to do social impact, one of the first questions and hard questions you're going to have to answer is am i going to be a business or am i going to be a non-profit because depending okay what you are thinking of doing 
you may need to operate as a nonprofit because there's not a market that will pay you for something. There's a market that wants stuff but doesn't have the capacity to pay. Then there is the other side where there is the capacity to pay, but then you have to create the market as opposed to having an existing market that you go into. And those two edge situations uh, are difficult conversations both internally but also with investors as well. The one on the nonprofit, they, there's not going to be an investor that will invest in a nonprofit because, face it, any investor, they're looking for a return. So, in that case, you'll need to be prepared to do the proposals and find the grants and get funding that way. On the other side, if there is a market, great, because you're going to go into an existing market, the investor will understand what's going on and there's a better definition of who the customer is and who's going to pay. If there's no market and you have to create it from scratch, that's a very difficult conversation. That's where it's extremely important to know your customer, to know what the problem is that they have, that they need a solution right now, and then articulate what exactly it is that you're doing and how you're going to create and penetrate a market that may not exist. It is always difficult to create a new market, that's for sure. There's a lot of added work that you have to do. I would say all of the startups coming into our program are for profit. They're looking at the triple P, the triple impact business models. But it's even then, with viable business models in mind, there's a lot of moving pieces, right? And there's like systems thinking you have to do, and sometimes the pieces, the gears just don't seem to align, and the whole right. thing doesn't move. Right. And the other thing that becomes extremely important along the way is flexibility. You have to not say, I know exactly what I'm doing and nobody else can tell me anything and that's the direction I'm going. Because the market may tell you something different. In which case, you have to be willing to adjust. I'm not talking about complete pivot, but instead of going to the left, maybe go to the right and you hit the market that way. Yeah, flexibility is like super important, right? As long as you're, they say, vision shouldn't change, but how you get there, you know, that's, if you don't, if you aren't flexible, it'll be really hard. Exactly. And that's what, what makes or breaks a company, actually. That's powerful food for thought as we, as we wrap up this interview. Demetrius, thank you so much. It was great hearing your insights and again, looking forward to working with you and thank you for your time. You're welcome, Amu. My pleasure.